cholesterol 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 i don't know how many times we've heard this not only from the vegans but also from the allopathic medicinal fraternity if you like for many many years unfortunately as it turns out there never was any science underpinning the assertion that cholesterol is causal in atherosclerotic heart disease or cerebrovascular disease or, or any other disease actually when you look at the associative data now i understand this is associative and not causal however this is a sample size of a hundred and something different countries this is tens hundreds actually of millions of person years of follow-up represented here in this chart what you see basically here is a regression or a series of regressions the the funny curved lines you see throughout the data sets here and the blue line represents the incidence of all cause mortality when you associate that with the average cholesterol level in the blood of the people in that country and so obviously there are huge residuals around this and the trend line is just the line of best fit sure so all these kind of arguments can be made however the trend such that it is with these hundreds and probably thousands of millions actually of, of person years of follow-up is that all cause mortality is lowest when the blood cholesterol concentration is 220 not the 70 or less that the medical fraternity and the, the vegans are, are trying to tell us is indicated good and healthful on the idea the false assumption that they make that cholesterol is causal in heart disease i'll deal with that in a minute anywho here is the associative stuff so 220 is the lowest all-cause mortality if you drop to 210 mortality goes up drop to 220 mortality goes up 190 mortality goes up 180 it's up again 170 still further up 160 still you can see the trend line here basically in other words the lower you drop the cholesterol level in the blood below 220 the higher the number of deaths from all causes interesting okay so if we look at heart disease specifically you will see the same thing again so we have in this case the lowest incidence of heart disease looks like it's around between 200 and 210 it's the it's the red dotted line near the bottom there and again you'll see that the lower you drop the cholesterol below 205 or so the higher the incidence of cardiovascular disease mortality the same is true of um, of infectious diseases that's the solid red line uh, the green line there is communicable maternal peripheral and nutritional conditions same same deal again uh, the green dotted line infectious and parasitic diseases so i mean you look through this chart in your own time uh, anytime you like class and you will find basically that all cause mortality and also pretty much every individual isolated cause of mortality goes up and up and up in terms of incidence in line with a reduction of cholesterol in the blood so that's not a good start okay so that is the british heart foundation data uh, collected and put together anyway in 2005 and we're talking the cholesterol there we're talking about is milligrams per deciliter okay so there we go 200 plus is ideal in terms of incidence of death from all causes and death from each individual cause pretty much as well 
So there it is on that one. Let's move on now to another argument regarding cholesterol that you won't hear from the vegans or the from the medical fraternity. And that is that if cholesterol was a cause of heart disease, which it isn't, and there was a dose response prevalence of heart disease, i.e. the higher the cholesterol, the higher the incidence of heart disease, which I've just shown you is not the case, at least in terms of mortality, um, then if we took the blood cholesterol level from a whole bunch of patients who are admitted to hospital with a heart attack, then what we should see is an ever-increasing number of patients presenting with heart attack, which goes up and up and up, coincident with the blood cholesterol level in those patients also going up and up and up. So we should see pretty much a straight line, which looks a bit like that with maybe a drop off at the end, a sudden precipitous drop off, because there'll be a maximum uh, level of cholesterol that, that people normally have in their blood. And so after that, there'll be a very, very low number of people at that. But anyway, we should get this straight line, dose response relationship, which, which is what we're told to expect. So let's have a look at the blood cholesterol levels as measured within the first 24 hours after admission to hospital with a heart attack in 300 and I think it's 348,000 individuals from memory. Let's have a look at it. Well, here it is. The reference is given to you there at the left of the screen. This is the blood low density lipocholesterol or so-called bad cholesterol in the blood of patients who have had a heart attack in the last 24 hours. And goodness me, rather than this ever increasing with maybe a precipitous drop at the end, what we have here is pretty much a normal distribution curve, a normal bell curve, very slightly skewed, actually towards the lower end and not the higher end. It looks like pretty much the highest incidence of heart attacks are being experienced by people with cholesterol in the range of about 80 to 100, actually. Uh, which is only slightly higher than the 70 which is suggested. But actually, if 70 or less was indicated because of the slope of the curve on the left-hand side of this bell curve, then obviously the same argument holds for 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, and 220 as well, because the incidence of patients per... 100,000 presenting with heart attacks goes down and down and down and down in people with that level of cholesterol in their blood, which not surprisingly looks to be pretty much in line with what we see on the red dotted line here from the British Heart Foundation with those hundreds of millions and probably thousands of millions of person years of follow up. Goodness me, it's almost like they are convergent lines of evidence which seem to agree, seem to dispel the mythology that low-density lipoprotein is somehow causal in heart disease. Interesting, isn't it? Um, just, for, just for fun, let's also have a look at some more data from that very same paper that I'm talking about here with those 350,000 heart attack patients. Let's look at their high density or so-called good cholesterol and let's also look at their triglyceride levels as well to see whether there is this cause and effect in the case of uh, triglycerides, it should go like that. And uh, in the case of, um, of HDL, which is so-called good cholesterol, it should go like that, shouldn't it? Let's see if it does. Goodness me, no. Uh, once again, we have sure skewed, but we have normal distribution curves here, don't we? So neither HDL nor triglycerides are, are acceptable proxy measures or acceptable predictors of the incidence of heart disease either. Oh dear. Let's move on to the final bit of discussion with regard to cholesterol. 
Okay, well, here it is here. This is a paper put together by Ravenskoff and his co-workers, published in 2018. This is a comprehensive review, which I suggest should be compulsory reading for everybody, uh, but especially those in the medical fraternity and also those who have fallen prey to the Church of Anorexia Vegana and their ideological claptrap about a cholesterol and heart disease, for example. Anyway, the title of this review gives away pretty much what these, uh, what these authors are arguing and what they're finding, i.e. low-density lipoprotein cholesterol does not cause cardiovascular disease. There we go. So that's the cholesterol myth busted. For those that want more on cholesterol, if you look at my main YouTube channel, you will find a playlist there which has more than 40 videos in it, all about cholesterol, where I cover the science, I debunk the charlatans, and I basically deal in great depth over many, many hours of science-based uh, entertainment and educational videos. Uh, well worth a look, so go and check that out if you need more on that one. But anyway, that's number one. Cholesterol though. Nope. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Cholesterol does not cause cerebrovascular disease. No. Okay, so sorry about that, uh, vegans and the medical profession.